In this age of new normal, online is not your only option. Because new normal means new learning modalities and new learning possibilities. Let Dibal make learning offline possible with Smart Class. Smart Class contains pre-made daily modules sequenced according to DepEd's budgeted teaching and learning calendar. Each module has a specific lesson duration and has day markers to guide parents and teachers in the asynchronous learning of learners. Inside the modules available in Smart Class, you will find the following elements. First, learning competencies are identified in the module openers. Kickstarters are available to test students' prior knowledge on the subject matter. This set of activities, found at the beginning of each lesson, may also serve as motivational activities. Parents of preschool to grade 2 students will also find notes to parents which contain tips and pointers on how they can guide their child while learning at home. Redefine your student's learning experience with the integration of augmented reality technology into images and illustrations available in Smart Class, making learning more interactive and exciting. At the end of each module, Long Quiz is also available to assess students' understanding of the lesson. Smart Class also features Wrap Up, a lesson ender activity that applies the constructivism theory of learning. In wrap-up, students are expected to summarize the lesson on their own using a graphic organizer. You may also evaluate the quality of your students' learning by letting them practice their learning in real life through GRASP's formatted performance tasks. The content of Smart Class is designed for the entire academic year, and it is available for five major subjects. All aligned with DepEd's K-12 curriculum and covers the most essential learning competencies prescribed by DepEd. Secure your own copy of Smart Class before classes open. Contact marketing at debalgroup.com to know more. Good afternoon, Kavibal, and welcome to our preschool webinar series. For today's discussion, our topic would be on home literacy activities, strengthening listening comprehension to promote literacy development, part two on music and movement. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our session this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker for today. In Condense, he worked as a college professor, both for undergraduate and graduate levels at the Philippine Normal University, focused on module development, student, research, and extension programs from 2004 to 2009. Then, he became the editor-in-chief of Aklat at Dunong Publishing from 2009 to 2011, where he was tasked to benchmark instructional materials in and from Singapore and contextualize it to the Philippines setting. After that, he was taken in the Department of Education Central Office as consultant, designer, and writer for the K-12 program for Universal Kindergarten and English Curriculum, and evaluator for Technology and Livelihood Education modules for grades 7 and 8. Also, he was taken as consultant and writer for English 3 module, which was to serve as a model for all modules development for English grades 4 to 6. In 2014, he was taken in by the United States Assistance for International Development or the USAID as language consultant 
through RTI field ed data in the contextualization of early grade reading assessment or the EGRA for grade 3 and early grade assessment for mathematics or the EGMA. For waray waray language, we are now commonly known as early language, literacy, and numeracy assessment for grade 1. After this, he was taken in by the Education Assessment Division or the EAD as consultant in the development and validation of national entry assessment for grades 4, 7, and 11 and exit assessment for grades 6, 10, and 12 on campus journalism program of the Department of Education. While well, having all of these independent consultancy projects in DepEd and other private schools associations in the country, he was serving the Sisters of Mary Schools, Philippines Administrative Research and Development Center, or the SMS ARDC, as their academic and curriculum consultant. Moreover, he is one of the top 10 reading and preschool specialists in the Philippines and is a sought-after resource speaker, lecturer, and consultant to various web to various seminars and conferences here and abroad. He was one of the invited plenary speakers at the 50th Regional Language Center Singapore with the theme, Transcending Boundaries in the Language Learning, Language Arts, and ELT Across the Curriculum. He has written various books, modules, let review materials for the Philippine Normal University and for other colleges and universities all over the country. He graduated with a Bachelor of Early Childhood Education degree cum laude and a certificate in reading specialization recipient of service and leadership award he received his master of arts in teaching with specialization in reading at the philippine normal university outstanding reading graduate he took phd in reading ed in reading education at pnu and took phd in english studies units at the university of santo tomas manila and now finishing his doctoral degree in curriculum and instruction at the Philippine Normal University, Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Brother Roderick Aguirre, PhD. Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for tuning in. On my last topic for on home literacy, um, developing literacy, uh, listening comprehension towards the development of literacy among your students, especially in the younger years. Um, before I begin, I would like to give a shout out to all the members of the EDUC team of Vibal, especially to their head, uh, Sarah, Sarah Sunga, right? <laughs> and um, of course, to Mitch, who's always there uh, to bog me and to bully me every now and then. But thank you very much. Kiana, too, is my moderator. Thank you very much for uh, pushing through with my webinar this afternoon and of course yesterday. So my talk today will be the part two of uh, home literacy activities, which um, focuses on how we as educators and parents and primary caregivers could, could promote listening comprehension at home and promote literacy development via that uh, listening comprehension. The point being is that um, Last time we talked about the importance of listening development in the development of literacy, which is reading and writing. And we've talked about that as RRC. But today, this afternoon, I'll be zoning on on listening comprehension per se and how we can develop that via music and eventually um, the development of cogn cognition or cognitive functions via movement. All right, so let me share my, my screen with you. And then I have uh, a little bit of an activity for us. Hope you cannot see the picture though, all right? So I know you're all listening to me, so you just have to uh, grow, go through and I would presume that you're already doing this. So here's, let's try this. Um, get a piece of paper and a pencil, all right? Get a piece of paper and a pencil. We're going to have a little short listening activity and I'll give you directions how to go about it. And if you're able to, able to accomplish the activity with uh, high efficiency and high effectiveness, then it would show that you have good listening skills, all right? So here are the instructions though, in general. So listen as I described to you the set of shapes three times. Again, I'll be describing to you set of shapes three times. During the first time, listen carefully as I describe the set of shapes. 
you're not to do anything, you're not to draw it. All you have to do is listen to me, close your eyes, close your eyes and listen to me as I describe the set of shapes. During the second time, you are now allowed to draw the set of shapes I am describing to you, all right? Then on the third time or final time, uh, uh, you are now to verify, you have to go back to what you draw and correct your drawing as I described the set of shapes for the last time, all right? And finally, I will show the set of shapes to you and uh, you're going to correct whether you draw exactly the set of shapes that I described to you. Are you ready? Okay, I'll just open my cell phone so that I can see the shape because I, I'm not gonna use the shape here in my PowerPoint. Otherwise you will see the shape already. <clears throat> okay, so first, okay, first, uh, listening activity. There are four shapes in this set. Again, there are four shapes in this set. The first shape is draw a triangle. Draw a triangle. And inside the triangle, draw a circle. The sides of the circle or the lines of the circle must touch the sides, the two sides, the left and the right side, the top and the bottom uh, sides of the square. Now inside, inside the circle, you draw a diamond. The, the tip of the diamond should touch the center of the center of the circle and the square, top, bottom, side, and side. Then draw a line that separates the upper triangle of the diamond to the lower part of the diamond. You are now going to shade black, shade black, the upper triangle of the diamond inside the circle where the circle is inside the square. Now you are left with a triangle, the bottom triangle that is not shaded. I want you to draw a star at the center of the inverted triangle, which is the half of the diamond. Once you're done drawing the star, shade black the star. All right, you're done with the first listening activity. Let's now proceed to my second description of the activity. This time you're going to draw the shape as I describe it. There are four shapes in the set. The first shape is draw a square, a big square, okay? And inside the big square, uh, you should draw a circle. The sides of the circle should touch the upper part of the square, upper and lower part of the square, and the two sides, the left and the right sides of the square. Now, when you're done, draw a diamond, okay, draw a diamond inside the circle. The tips of the diamond, the upper tip, the lower tip, the left and right tip must touch the sides where the circle, the line of the circle and the line of the square touches on the top, the bottom, the left and the right. Now, when you're done, draw a line, draw a line horizontally to create two halves of the diamond, the upper part and the lower part, all right? A horizontal, a horizontal line dividing the diamond into upper triangle and a lower triangle or inverted triangle. The upper triangle shaded black. The upper triangle of the diamond shaded black. Now you are left with a lower triangle which is now an inverted triangle that is not shaded. What I want you to do is draw a star at the middle of this part of this inverted unshaded triangle. 
Once you're done with the star, drawing the star, shade the star black. All right, let's now have the third and final description of the sets of shapes. And now you're going to draw, you're now going to correct whether or verify whether you draw the right uh, description. In this set, uh, there are four shapes in this set, set of shapes. The first, first draw a big square. Inside the square, draw a circle. The circle, the line of the circle must touch the upper, uh, uh, the top and the bottom and the side lines of the square. Inside the square, draw a, tri draw a diamond. The tips of the diamond, the upper and the, the top and the bottom, the left and side tips of the diamond must touch where the lines of the circle and the square uh, touches or touch. Now draw a line to create two triangles, a horizontal line that would cut into halves the diamond, the upper and the lower, a horizontal line that cuts it equally, which will, you will now have an upper triangle and a lower inverted triangle. Shade the upper triangle black. Now the remaining inverted, unshaded, uh, inverted triangle of the diamond, draw a star in the middle of it, then shade the star. All right, so that's about it. Now let's check if you were able to listen and, be, and was able to uh, accomplish the listening test. So this is the shape I was describing, a square and a circle that touches at the side of the bottom and then a, and a diamond. And then you draw a line that happened to have equally the diamond into upper triangle and in a lower triangle, inverted triangle. And then the upper triangle must be shaded black. And in the bottom, you're going to draw a star. So we have one, two, three, four, four shapes. Although if we count the two, uh, the two um, triangles, we're not going to have, we will now have a total of six shapes. Now, if you, this kind of activity is a good activity for our students to develop listening skills. It's a good motivational skills for them. You can embed that in your modules if you have. You can also embed that part, ask the parents to do this every now and then. Why? Because listening comprehension is the, the most uh, um, neglected skill, okay? The most neglected skill at home and the most neglected skill at school. We do not, seldom that teachers would teach listening comprehension. Most of our teachers and most of our parents would, would assume that because we have ears, automatically we have, we can, we have listening skills. Now what we're, we're gonna do today is learn the difference between being able to hear and being able to listen, all right? So these are the two uh, skills that we need to differentiate and which of these skills should be taught directly and which comes you know, naturally because physiologically we have that. So. Let's now look at the difference between hearing and listening, all right? Now, the many things that we need to teach our kids is that there's a time for listening and there's a time for speaking. And, and yesterday we talked about oracy, that uh, oracy has two, side, has two sides at the same point, that would be listening and then speaking. We cannot respond to the people we are communicating with if we do not listen. We will not be able to accomplish tasks if we do not listen, like in the new now, how can our students be able to understand their modules if they do not listen to the teacher's explanation by an online feed or online material or vice versa? They would listen to the teacher first online and then read the material. What I'm trying to say here is that in the new normal, listening will become a core skill in lots of our students. And we need to uh, make sure that we integrate the listening, the development of listening comprehension skills in our materials. And we need to remind our parents that uh, to focus also on listening at home. So let's now have the difference between hearing and listening. So hearing is more of a physiological process since we have ears, then we can, we can, uh, we can assimilate, we can hear 
various inputs from the environment. So right now, probably you hear me talking, you hear the wind blowing, you can hear dogs barking, you can hear the tricycle uh, going about outside your house, probably also other noises are there. And you are able to assimilate all of those. But listening is more of a psychological process, meaning the brain, meaning of all the, 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 the stimulus or the stimuli that you are assimilating, lahat ng mga napap- naririnig mo, all right? napapakinggan mo, the sound, my voice, the sound of the wind, the sound of the dog and so on, you choose to focus on only one. And that, I hope that would be my voice and the, my explanation. So you are at the same time hearing, but at the same time you are listening. Listening is more psychological. It's more purposive. Of all the things that you are hearing, you focus only on what you think is more important. Therefore, listening is more focused. There is a purpose for it. All right. Next, hearing is natural. Even if you're, if even if you are um, sleeping, you're still hearing. It, it wouldn't stop. In fact, hearing would be the the first and the last sense. Okay, last sense, listen, hearing uh, sense and hearing skill would be the last sense that you will uh, that will you know when you die. That will be the last thing that would you know die in you as a part of your physi- physiology. If it's not hearing is natural, listening is learned process. So observe in hearing, no one teaches you to hear. It is automatically, but you have ears, of course, discounting, of course, for those who are deaf. Eventually they will have other ways, other senses that would compensate for their hearing loss. But for those who have you know ears and they can hear in a normal range. It's a natural process. It happens without you like without you teaching your ears how to listen, how to hear, I mean. But learning to listen is something that we teach. We teach them how it's done and what skills that are that that comes with it. All right. And it is a skill. And like any other skill, it is learned and we need to practice that. And I think I assume that a lot of our teachers out there have been utilizing a lot of listening activity, but I'm not saying that um, they're not doing right. What I'm trying to say is that probably they just use a a part of the listening activity to focus more on information of the topic, information of the lesson and so on and so forth, but somehow fail to totally develop the listening skills. But at this point of the new now of the educational of the education the Philippines all, all, all over the world, we will be requiring our students a lot of time to listen, to listen to audio feed, to listen to um, online materials and so on and so forth. So our students will now have to shift from just merely you know teacher talk at school, doing activities, having collaborative to highly independent, use of listening skills it's a passive activity all right it, it's it's you just allow your ears to, to do it to do that it's you can do it consciously or unconsciously but in listening it's an active activity you need to be conscious and you need to be purposive in what you're doing it has it's an active since it's a skill okay an active activity so now we make a difference now so let's find out how how listening happens of course it starts with hearing all right, hearing is you receive raw data from the environment, either from uh, a re- uh, an audio recording, from a film, from the explanation of the teacher, from an online feed, or perhaps the parents are reading aloud the materials on the module or from the module. Nonetheless, they're hearing, all right? Now, for parents out there, you really need to make your students, uh, your kids, focus on listening. A good example would be, when I do that, I ask my, 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 my nieces to, to look at me when I'm talking to them, not to look at other things. Or I could ask them to close their eyes and listen to my instructions or listen to the music and so on and so forth. So uh, the less senses are involved, uh, focusing more on the ears would be better in developing the listening skills. Then from there, you know, you will now ask students to select from the many many uh, 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 stimuli or stimulus that they hear from the environment. 
how do we do that? Either we post questions or we show them a picture that relates to what they're supposed to focus on and so on and so forth. Meaning we need to give them uh, a cue that would help them select and focus on a certain information, all right? The next would be attending or focusing attention, meaning once they have now selected information, then it's now we're now ready to give them the actual listening activity. Therefore, the hearing and the selecting would be more of a motivation, a free activity, and then by then they are ready to really actually listen. So it's not actually listen per se. You have to ready yourself to the listening activity. In like manner, we need to do that to our students. Now, next would be, once they're able to focus on the material, the material should be the listening material and the online material that you, that you develop must be in a way developed that it helps the learners focus on and give attention to understanding of the material. The way I develop materials for online and for listening activity is that I shorten I, I shorten the information to the most important information. And then when I read the words, I emphasize the words that are most important for students to retain in their minds. A good example like, Maria went to the market. If my question afterwards would be who went to the market, the way I will read aloud the sentence, Maria went to the market. So when you create online materials, it is not just blurting out or reading aloud or saying words, but it's giving your students a cue on what words in the sentence or in paragraph or the material that you are presenting should be given emphasis by your students. So giving emphasis or stress to certain words or certain phrases to give them cue that these are very important words. Now, say the same sentence, Maria went to the market and you have a question like, your question would be, where did Maria go? So I would change my intonation from Maria went to the market. See the difference? So there's a huge difference between oral material, Maria went to the market, from Maria went to the market. Why? Because it depends on what you want your students to focus on, what information. But if you want, to fo to, you want your students to focus more on what Maria was doing, you say Maria went to the market. They hope you're getting the point there. It is not just say Maria went to the market. Which of those information in that in that audio input do you want your students to focus on to make a, to focus on their focus their attention on, and then focus on uh, move on to understanding why why did the teacher emphasize Maria oh probably uh, my teacher wants me to understand that Maria is a very important character in the story that I'm going to uh, listen to, see? The next would be evaluating and analyzing and judging. It's very important for us that in every after activity or listening activity, well, not just listening activity, but a lesson activity for that matter, that we have to evaluate whether our students were able to focus on the information we want them to uh, process. Therefore, we need either individual activity or a collaborative activity using guide questions or probably using some pictures or some activities that would assess whether they, really, whether they were really able to focus on that. Now, let me relate that to materials development. I would suggest that you start with individual evaluation before a collaborative evaluation because one way or the other, if you move on immediately to collaborative evaluation or assessment of the listened act or listening activity, more often than not, those students who were not able to focus on the information would just follow what the other classmates or members of the group heard or listened to or processed. So what you want to do is whether initially individually they were able to grasp focus attention and develop listening skills. Therefore, it is important that we do individual assessment first before collaborative assessment, all right? For us to, you know, individually assess whether we they got it or not, okay? So this is, this is my suggestion though. Uh, when you develop materials, not just for listening, especially with, the, with, the, with the, the new now, start with individual evaluation before collaborative or having, you know, partners, okay? Next would be remembering, remembering would be 
the use of note taking, the use of drawing, the use of graphic organizer that would somehow summarize the things that they uh, process during listening. So note taking is one of the many skills that we want our students to, uh, to uh, acquire. One of the many problems of, of you know, note taking, uh, teaching for our, teaching note taking to our kids is that, to our children is that while the teacher is talking, the students are taking down notes. No, that's wrong. They should listen first before they do take down notes. They take down notes because these are the most important information that they need to listen, not all the things that the teacher would uh, would say. I, I had um, an example of that when I was teaching, you know, uh, English majors in the La Salle University. And during my uh, midterm exam, I gave them uh, gave them an essay, an essay about, uh, about I think that my last one was about remediation on, on a situation of a student. And then I was, I was amazed. I didn't know if I will be honored. I will be uh, happy in reading that the examples that the students wrote in their essay were exactly the jokes and the examples that I gave them during uh, the discussion. And I said, no, when, when uh, doing note taking is not necessarily those that they take down notes, even your jokes, even your nuances, even your examples. Those examples should be theirs, not ours. That's the point though, all right? That note taking, especially for the listening activity, is done after the listening activity, not while listening. All right, now next would be responding. So giving feedback, so we can now ask probably students to talk about what they listen to, either by uh, questions or just you know plain sharing of what they heard and what they understood from the listening text. And they, it can be done by uh, uh, speaking or it can be done by uh, writing. So come up with many ways or creative ways, how can we do that? We cannot just you know, do listening by listening. Now, music can be done like, they listen to music. Since my topic today is developing listening comprehension through music and comprehension. Uh, uh, through music and uh, movement. So what we can do here is uh, we can ask our students to listen to music and then after listening to the music, we can ask them probably to respond to the music via movements. They may, they may want to interpret the music. Uh, so their interpretation of the music comes from their comprehension of the lyrics of the music and then come up with movements to interpret the music. That's a good way to do that, a creative way to do that. Probably ask them to record it. Um, I, I think you're hearing my hearing the dogs barking. Uh, the dogs are in the other room, so I apologize for that. Um, so here are some of the stages of listening uh, a listening lesson, if you would like to inc include that in your materials preparation, especially during the modification part. So we start with before listening. So we provide activities to prepare your learners to listen, okay, to listen. And then, so there, it could be like what I did, uh, hypothetically, hypothetically thinking that as I give you instructions what to do, uh, I assume that you're already doing that at home, but when you develop materials for students, especially that it has learning competencies, you may want to enlist the primary caregivers and then make sure that if it's a listening activity, that part there, there's a movie that they're gonna watch or a short clip that they're gonna watch or um, an explanation for the teacher that they need to listen to. Um, it would be nice if there's a scaffold, a support from the primary caregivers uh, present at home so that you know, uh, the time that they're supposed to understand the material should not be wasted, all right? Next would be during listening activity where you provide cues to help the, the learners focus on essential information on listening text. Here's what I'm trying to say here is that when you deliver online material, especially if you have a script and reading that, you need to go to the learning competencies and which of those, uh, which of those words would realize the learning competencies. Uh, say you would like, the learning competency would say, the students must be able to enumerate, I'm just saying, okay, must be able to enumerate the different planets in the solar system. So when you read your script about the solar system, you need to emphasize the statements or the words, uh, there are blank uh, planets in the solar system. You have the first, the first nearest to the sun is the blank, blank, blank. So you need to emphasize the names so that um, it's a cue for those, for your students to listen that I think 
my teacher is emphasizing these words because these are important information that I need to retain in my head, all right? Or I need to listen to. All right, there we go. Um, I would highly suggest that your materials should also come. You, you can also ask your students to, instead of just, you know, listening to the computer and having an audio, uh, audio output. So I'm also requesting that um, they have earphones too, okay? So at least they'll make them more focused on and to lurk out the other sounds in the environment and then be able to focus on the sounds that they're listening to. And finally, we have the after listening activity where you provide teachers and parents provide learners with activities. Again, as I said, individual or collaborative, but my suggestion is go for individual first for you to be able to individually assess whether students got it or not before they move on to collaborative uh, activity and then to help them integrate and extend uh, what they have understood from the listening test, okay? And then before they talk. So I'm really, hell, I'm, also, uh, I'm also suggesting that you come up with a platform for students and group them and then ask them to be able to interact with each other at a certain time of the day or the weekend where they can talk about what they did in did in the online and online material or uh, what they have read in the module modular modular instruction All right so here are some techniques for before listening activity so you have before listening activity that's an amorphous though so what you do is activate learners previous knowledge on context say it's araling palipunan and you're talking about say ang kabias na ang sinaunang kabias na ng Africa so well, you might you may want to prepare students that they're supposed to understand the material as ng ulang panahon not using now. Okay? Baka sabi nila, eh bakit naman sila nag ano nag naglalakad ng matagal tapos uh, uh, binubuhat ang mga bigat na mga emer eh, na mga sasakyan. Wait, wait, nung unang kabiyasnan, ito ang mga, itong konteksto ng mga tao noon, ito yung uh, ito yung uh, conditions. So one way or the other, we're able to help our students modify modify their schema and be ready for what they're supposed to focus on. Context is one. Next will be topic. I think I need, I need not uh, elucidate more on the topic because I know that topic is one of the many most important things that we need to uh, uh, help our students uh, activate on their minds on. It could be connecting previous topics that they already learned and they connected connecting it to uh, the lesson at hand. Next, of course, vocabulary. I think this is one of the, of the many uh, elements of listening, well, not just listening, but all materials that teachers develop that have been uh, uh, sorely neglected. We automatically move on to the lesson per se, and we forget the vocabulary. I hope that next week when you listen to some of the webinars, I suggested that there should be a session on teaching vocabulary and the vocabulary in the content areas, not just vocabulary for the language lessons, but also for the other content areas. Because I think, especially for now that the teacher is not present to explain some of the words that the teachers will be using in the modules or the online material, it's very important we go back again to integrating jargon to all materials that we develop so that at least with at least we're able to compensate for our absence, uh, absence during the, the learning or the use of the material at home, all right? So next you can probably have ideas and emotions. So we, especially for the emotions, I mean, a good example would be if we would like our students to, the lesson in Araling Palipunan, I'm sorry, I'm using right now Araling Palipunan as our, our, our subject area. Ang lesson mo sa Araling Palipunan ay halimbawa sa, 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 sa senior high school would be, huwag lang sa uh, sa senior high school, siguro sa preschool na lang kasi preschool naman tayo. Sa preschool po ay ang say, ang, uh, ang iba't ibang miyembro ng pamilya, something like that. You could probably ask the emotions, like you could probably show them pictures of different types of families, families where families that there's only one child, family where there are, there are extended families, families that, you know, kids are, are raised and raised uh, in, in foster homes, kids that are raised in um, 
mga bahay ang punan and so on. So different types of families. By that would trigger students to think that there are other types of families and other members of the families aside from their, their own members of the family. So that would prepare them emotionally also not to be shocked at the other, you know, that some classmates would, 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 would give uh, other, other you know, explanations of the members of the family, all right? So what are the things that we can do to help them prepare for the listening activity or any lesson for that matter? We, need, we can have picture prompts, short videos, we can have pre-questions, guide questions for that. We can also have games, all right? We can have checklists and definitely we can have songs and all other, all other creative things that we can come up with, all right? So let's have an example, let's practice. I would use picture props. So pretend that you are my students, my preschool students, okay? Good afternoon, children. Right, so I will show you here some, I will show you different pictures, okay? And what I want you to do is name these pictures, all right? So we have, kunwari, napakita ko ng picture ng books. We, kids would say, oh, those are books, right? Very good. What about the other one? It's an ice cream and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. So all of these pictures that I show, that, that, that I, uh, the pictures that you gave me, gave, my English is wrong. Uh, all of these things and objects that I show, that I, that I have shown to you have different shapes. So I would like you to look at the pictures one more time, and then I will ask you to listen to a music, okay, to a song, and then I will ask you to listen to the song and what shapes are being used to describe things and objects around us, All right? So pwede ganon. Picture prompts muna, wag ka sabihin na, Today we're going to learn about shapes. There are different base. There's the shapes like a triangle, a rectangle, and so on and so forth. Hindi. Itrigger mo muna utak. Antunak utak ng bata pang imagination of the students, especially the, for the preschoolers. They love to think and imagine. So by giving them pictures, students get to start, you know, being motivated. And by speaking, you are now able to develop or see because you ask them to see the picture. And then you ask students at random to, or since it's online, you ask students to voice out, okay, say the, say the names of the pictures. So they're also listening and at the same time speaking. So ORC is developed in the before listening activity, all right? So techniques for during listening activity, here's what we can do. We want, we want uh, the learners to focus on essential information, sorry. Focus on this this place there. Have learners focus on essential information. How do we do that? I mean, what are they need? What do they need to focus on? Of course, identify identify main facts and details. Facts per se relate cause effect relationships, especially if there there are events that they need to remember. And then we have identify sequence of events. Oh, well, basically, especially on stories. We did that already yesterday in storytelling. It would be nice that we emphasize a change of event like. Uh, after then what happened so it denotes identifying sequence of events where pictures could pictures would also have our students be able to sequence the events especially storyboards next we have inferring meaning from contextual clues we could probably randomly ask students um words that they just heard that day or today in the listening material based on using the context or contextual clues now for, for kids i would say for the preschoolers Context would be more of a picture context than, you know, sentence context or embedded sentence context. Because again, remember our students at preschoolers are yet to be taught how to read, All right? How do we do that? We can have matching activity. So we can say match the words to the pictures or you can have sequence the pictures from, so you have storyboards or you have pictures. And then you ask them to sequence the events according to the according to how they heard the story was was read aloud to them. Next, you have note taking is one of the many important things, especially for the higher grade levels. Next, you have filling in gaps that you give them sheets, activity sheets, and why they uh, and and what they do is that they fill in some of the information that was mentioned in the audio or the online material, and then fill in the gaps so that these the the gaps or the lines. Uh, the, the, the information that is missing on the activity sheet will be the things that they should focus more on. 
obeying instructions that I just did a while ago by you know listening to the active, listening to the sets of shapes. That that would be great. And detecting differences, and then ticking of items, checklist perhaps, and are the take the following information that has been discussed in the uh, in the material. And then finally, we have information transfer. All right. So let's now have an example on that. Uh, not anymore. Oh, here. Sorry. So, so connecting that to the first thing, the pre-listening activity where I give pictures. So here's what you're going to do. So teacher will sing the song three times, all right? During the first time teacher Ricky is singing the song, you are to close your eyes, sit still, and listen to the lyrics of the song, all right? During the second time teacher Ricky, the little da, teacher Ricky is singing the song, you are to open your eyes, Hold your pencil, I'm not holding a pencil, but a ball pen, a pencil, and draw the shapes and the examples on the drawing paper. Again, on the second time, you are now allowed, the second time that I will sing the song, you are now allowed to draw the shapes, uh, shapes in the lyrics of the song and the examples of objects um, of, of those shapes. Next, during the third time, teacher Ricky is singing the song, you are to review what you draw and check if you have drawn all the shapes and their examples based on the lyrics of the song. Ready? Okay. So, siyempre, kung, kung itong materialis po na ito ay online na binibigay, you may want to repeat the instructions the second time around. Okay? Now, if, if, uh, if you think there are primary caregivers present at home, you may want to give time. Um, Parents or caregivers present, you may want to entertain questions from your, from from me, from the student, from your child, from your daughter, from your son, if they understood the instructions. So you give a pause, that is educational pause embedded in your online material, and then thank you very much. Now let's proceed. All right. So the title of the song is shapes around us. So instead of getting songs that have already been published, I'm using now the song that my brother and I composed. Siempre composer. All right, so listen po tayo. Ha? I'm not saying I'm good, I'm a good singer, but I'll do my best since my session is developing listening comprehension through music movement. So I'll just have to sing though. Okay, let me prepare my lyrics. So listen the first time. See all the things around us, different shapes around us, rectangles, triangles, and squares, as well as circles and ovals to share. Rectangles for tables, is squares for frames. Oh, what fun for us, different shapes surround us. See all things around us, different shapes surround us. Rectangles, triangles, and squares as well as circles and ovals to share. Triangles for pizzas, circles for balls, ovals for claws, different shapes surround us. See all things around us, different shapes surround us, rectangles, triangles, and squares, as well as circles and ovals to share. All right, children, so this is the first time you heard the song. So, well, I'm not going to sing the song the second time around, the third time around, but what I'm trying to say here is that in the material that you're going to develop online, I would appreciate that if you come up with a digital way of showing uh, the shapes while you're singing it. Uh, if the lyrics would say like, uh, trying Am I still moving?
you have a digital way of showing your pictures and the words and some of the objects to give examples to um, in the lyrics though. So it would be nice that there would be other visual materials that would be consulted more in the delivering of the, the materials. Um, am I still on? Mitch. Yes, for sir. Am I still on? Yes, for. Sorry, I'm. All right. So. So that we shapes around us. So I'm not going to give you the pictures anymore. So now say, sir, I do not know how to sing. So I, I don't have, I cannot carry a tune. So what can I do? Well, if you have problems with, you know, carrying a tune, what you can do is you just, you know, play it, embed it in your PowerPoint presentation or your online material, and then and have it with someone singing the song. All right. So you don't have to sing. I just, you know, in my case, it's an original song that we composed. I wanted to sing and want to show off that I can sing too. Okay, point. So let's now proceed to techniques after listening activity. So what do we do now after using the song? And then what do we ask our students to do? Definitely here, here's what we want our students to do. Let your learners integrate and extend what they listen to. So what are the things that we need to, to ask them to do after the listening? Clarify, verify, understanding. So if they have activity sheets, you may want them to verify if the information that they wrote on their activity or they draw in the activity sheet would be the same information given in the lyrics of the song. Next would be to synthesize information, talk about it perhaps by synthesizing, like asking questions. Uh, what were the shapes that uh, were mentioned in the song? Very good. What were some samples of the objects that have the, sh the shape of a rectangle? the shape of an oval, the shape of so on. What other objects you have or you see at home with the same shapes? So now extend it. Not just the examples that you gave based on the lyrics of the song, or if not the lyrics of the song, we can also use the stories that we delivered yesterday and then ask the students to be able to extend it to other things, other shapes they see. So extending is also important. Ah, I already mentioned that. Extend information to relevant experiences. So at home. So these are the things that you can do as an after listening activity. You have answering the guide questions, and then you have also making a summary, and then you have uh, writing follow ups, and then you have, of course, speaking as follow up. So let them talk about, about their experiences, of course, within the context of the shapes, or whatever the lesson at hand would be that. And then, of course, you can ask them to move to do a movement as a response, like you can ask them to. Uh, after listening to the song, you can ask them to make movements out of the song, uh, different shapes around us, all right? So music and movement, creative literacy activities at home. Oh, wait, I'm still having problems. Okay, so music and movement to develop listening and responding. So these are the things that we can do to help our students. So the focus of, of the importance of music to develop listening compression is that it helps our, our preschoolers, not just preschoolers though, but also for students in general to develop audiation. Audiation involves acquisition of sounds and the processing of it. If you will observe your young ones, when they have a favorite song and it all of a sudden is played on television or over the radio, you will observe that they automatically stop what they're doing and then they either uh, sing with the song, sing along with the song, or move with the song. Somehow, whether we like it or not, song has a way of making students pay attention to it. Even, even for adults, if you like the song, whatever, whatever you're doing, you, you immediately stop and then, you know, nag-i-emote ka agad. Yung ibang hindi marunong kumanta, mag-i-emote. O kaya, kakanta, kahit sintunado, kakanta with the song. Um, 
song has an hypnotic effect on learners, on individuals. And this is what I'm trying to say. By integrating song in your lessons, by integrating song as a pre, um, uh, as a motivation activity for any lesson for that matter, which develops listening comprehension too, is a good way for motivating them and asking them to focus on what they're supposed to understand on, on your lesson. Okay, so pwede po din gawin kasi na nakalagay po sa inyong module na mayroong ipiplay si nanay sa bahay na maaaring binigay na sa, sa kanila in advance. Pero kagaya ng mga tanong kahapon ng mga, ng mga ating, uh, ng ating mga audience, Sir, paano po kung nasa bukas? Nasa bu sila may bigyan. Uh, I will have the same answer po. Uh, kailangan talaga magkaroon kayo ng face-to-face. -face. Whether you like it or not, you'll have to go there. Because if they do not have the technology, distance education will utterly fail. Now, uh, the, other, the other is the performer's technical acquaintance with his or her singing and movement. Wala pong pinapanganak na sintunado, right? In reality. Kahit po sintunado si nanay at si tatay, tayo po ay pinanganak na we are dis, uh, predisposed to be able to uh, be musical, all right? So, kung sintunado si nanay at tatay, huwag na po kayong kumanta o taong naloob, mga nanay at tatay. Ha? So, let the kids listen to the music. Good afternoon, everyone. Apologize, um, apologies for the inconvenience. We're just facing some technical difficulties on our side. We will be back in a few minutes with our speaker. Once again, we apologize for the inconvenience. We're just experiencing some technical difficulties here on our side. And we will be back with Brother Aguirre in a short while. Thank you very much for your patience and we'll see you.
This school year, bring class discussions at home with V Smart Schools webinar feature where you can conduct classes with your students in real time. Setting up a vSmart webinar is simple. Simply log in to your account, go to My Webinars, click Create, and enter your webinar details. Set your webinar to your lesson so your students can join as participants. You can finally start your class. The webinar feature also lets you chat with your students and share slide decks and other learning materials via share screen. Amazing, right? Get vSmart School and launch your remote learning setup for your school today. Email marketing at vivalgroup.com for more details. Hello. Good afternoon again. Sorry, I think uh, my connection got uh, that cut. Sa na apaka ng aso yung saksakan ng Wi-Fi. So let me continue my presentation. Let's proceed to the music and movement. Uh, to develop listening and responding, all right? So why is music very important in the development of uh, understanding and performance? Now, um, the, very the very skill that is developed when we, want, when we use music to our lessons would be the audition, which involves acquisition of sounds and the processing of it. And then the other is the perform performer's technical acquaintance with his or her singing and movement. So that means, Every child is born with the ability and predisposition to be musical and uh, to be 
you know, musical and can carry a tune. Not because, just because the parents cannot sing and, and, and have problems with, with carrying a tune, eventually their kids will be like that. It's not like the saying that kung ano ang puno siyang bunga. That, that's, that's not it. Now, if our kids are exposed to early on to, to music and uh, parents who are not good at singing, just, you know, please don't sing. Don't be a model to the kids how to sing bad. So, magplay na lang po kayo na music. And this is what the teachers can do. They can integrate that in, in, in their lessons and the online materials that listening as their, as their uh, motivation for them before the lesson itself. They can ask the students to listen to it or sing with the sing along with the music and it helps our students audition. Audition basically is helping our students to focus on on things that things that are, they think is important for them and very relevant for them. Like a good example would be parents out there, uh, teachers or parents would observe that their kids when all of a sudden your kids favorite song or commercial is played on television, they would stop everything they're doing and then they would play or they, they would dance and sing along with the, the commercial or even the, the song itself. That's how powerful songs are in, in helping our students develop listening comprehension. It has a hypnotic effect on individuals. And it's not only even good for the preschoolers, it's also good for adults like us, even for high school for adults. Remember, see when as adults, when, we, when all of a sudden we, we hear our favorite song, we, we pause and then we, 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 we sing along with the, with the song, right? So that's how powerful music is. And if we can integrate that in our lessons, I don't know how the module or the modular approach, but I would say um, music is a good way to helping our students focus on what they're supposed to learn that day. All right, so not anymore. Let's just you know browse over that. So music and movement fitness activities for toddlers and preschools. Okay, so toddlers and preschools are naturally physical. So when we say physical, ask them to do movements that are natural, natural to their physical movement, like nodding. All right, the eyebrows. These are movements. So I'm not saying through music through songs and dance. So wag mo nang dance. Dapat movement muna. That's why shagidi shagidi shapopo is a really good good activity for kids. Like they follow imitation like Samun says and all. These are good activities for kids because they have by doing that by they listen to the music and whatever the lyrics is all about, they follow the actions. They have now becoming more mature and have a good command of their bodily movements, all right? It also helps facilitate cognition. Music and movement encourages physical activity with brain build, building benefits of the music. So, mas lalong tumatalino ang bata pag palagi may music and brain, uh, music and movement sa bahay. So, parents, parents out there, have time to listen to music, dance with and, and dance with your kids. So, dapat may ganun. Uh, ginagawa ko yun sa mga pamangkin ko pag nandun kami sa kwarta ko. They will have music. And then they will see me mimicking kunwari ko makanta ko. So that's what probably they, like most of them are predisposed to singing and dancing. And, and, and it become, they become more creative individuals. And it helps their, their inquisitive minds too. And I see the connection to that. So important thing that you need to remind would be one, song choice. Mas gusto ng bat ang upbeat songs with predictable rhythm. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and then the beat, of course, is very, you know, uh, enticing to the students. Although don't shy away, don't shy away from uh, slower songs to experiment with tempo. Pwede man mabagal lang, pero wag naman masyadong mga love songs. So the love songs that we have, uh, for, that's more for the adults, but not for kids. So there are a lot of, of, of uh, slow tempo songs like, Somewhere over the rainbow way up high or you have songs like twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are so you can sing and then you can act like twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are up above the sky. 
so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. By singing with the lower tempo songs, kids get to experiment with other ways how to uh, get information from songs. So, mga ganun mga kanta, gusto ng mga bata yan, okay? Songs with catchy lyrics na merong rhythm, merong similarity of songs, It appeals to them very, very much. Okay? Pagay ng In the wings is butter When up the water spout O kaya uh, Mary had a little lamb. Pero sana bawasan po natin I, I cannot, like Pagkausap ko sa mga bata Pag kumakanta ko Binabawasan ko ang aking vibrato Like, alam sabi mo na uh, Twinkle, twinkle Baka ma-focus ng bata yung vibrato, hindi yung lyrics ng song or yung message ng song. So, as adults, we have other, you know, elements in our vocal cords, in our vocal skills that are not, should not, should be lessened for our children. Okay? Next thing that you need to consider would be the dance around. Okay? So, get the children moving by showing them, showing them how to dance and especially how the movement. So, again, it's very important for us to model to kids how the movements are actualized. So, possible naman sabi, tumalong ka kasi, tumalong ka. It says in the song na jump, jump, jump. So, pag sinabing jump, 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 di ka din magja-jump ka din. Kasi, in, uh, music and movement is on the perspective of modeling. Again, as I've said, if you have problems with movement, uh, the, puro kaliwa ang pa mo, tapos, pag gumanta ka, lahat, lower do, walang upper do. So, ang gagawin po natin ay gumamit po kayo ng maraming technology. You can ask them to follow. You can go to the YouTube and then uh, play children's song with movement. So, pwedeng gayain na ng mga bata. Huwag pong gamitin natin na tayo na mali, ang, mali po ang ating modeling. Huwag na lang po kasi yun ang gagayain ng mga bata. Alright? Do a few simple moves and ask them to imitate you. So, pwede naman po walang song, pwede pong chanting, moving, counting like one, 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 two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So you're just chant, chanting, but you're also having movements that are clapping. That's a good, they lo- kids love that too, all right? Another one, have your movements match the tempo. Kung may problema ka sa tempo, huwag na ikaw mag, mag-uga na mag-chant, mag-play ka na lang ng, 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 ng songs, okay? Get down low when the song gets, uh, gets, gets low too. So... Just remember some of the tips that we would like to be reminded of. Stand tall and move faster when speed. Kagaya uh, ng yung kanta na yung chicken song. You know the chicken. So mayroong mas slower, mas mayroong bibilis. Kids would love that. So nalalaman nila ang difference ng meaning ng pagbumabagal at bumibulas. All right. Um, instruments very important. Although in 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 doing movement and songs and movement for preschoolers, tellers and preschoolers, since we would like to embed also creativity, wag po sana tayong bili agad na mga musical instruments like the guitar and so on. So we could probably start with um, things that can be found at home that can produce sounds like say mga lata, okay, that we can create into tambourines and have shakers even like lalagyan natin ng mga pebbles, mga latas and mga shakers already. And even boxes that can be turned into musical instruments. Um, and even yung mga plastic bottles from water bottles that we can also make in our shapes and pwede pang, pang, pang make ng sounds to you know, have the te- teach students the tempo. So audiation is developed. Again, audiation is also a type of listening skill that helps our students to focus on sounds, the lyrics, and then turn into movement later on. Okay? So uh, just to move on with that, so sabi, um, the idea there is that please, Uh, as much as possible, we would like our students to be creative. So not necessarily buying a lot of materials that are, you know, commercialized uh, would, you know, somehow limit their creativity. But if you want them to be more creative, use the materials that are already present at home. And uh, it would also be, you know, logistically speaking, would be financially okay for the parents and for the, for the teachers. So teachers do not ask the parents to... Buy lots of musical instruments, all right? So these are the four reasons for including music in a classroom. One, as I've explained a while ago, mental capacity and intellect develops that. Listening to the lyrics 
and the lyrics that you know gives information to our students would very 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 good for instead of having lectures they learn things via the song okay also mastery of the physical self via movement responding to the beat of the song via moving and movement it helps students master the physical uh, development development of the effective affect if the song is a happy music, they, 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 they move emotionally with it. If the song is sad, um, they, they move with it as well. And then we have development of creativity of, uh, of, of using music and creativity. Let's now have an example of both for each. So, so let's have mental capacity and intellect. It says there's a connection between music and development of mathematical thinking. Mathematical concepts are developed as children sing Counting songs. There are a lot of songs out there, children's songs, that instead of, you know, okay, and now I count by one, two, three, that becomes boring for preschoolers. They integrate songs so that they can, uh, they, they, they learn how to count like one little, two little, three little engine, four little, five little, six little engine, seven little, eight little, nine little engine, ten little engine, engine boys. I think it would say, contextualist can add one little, two little boys, little girls. Yo, pwede na pong girls, then boys, then children at the end. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask you again to listen to the song that my brother and I composed. And let's find out if there is, you know, uh, something that they can learn about mathematics. Monday, Tuesday, sing. Play all day long. Wednesday, Thursday, read and write all day long. Friday is the last day of the five school days. Saturday and Sunday, family and friends for two days. Monday to Sunday, seven days of fun in a week. Monday to Sunday, seven days of fun in a week. Oh, so instead of saying immediately to, sorry, I just pause it as an example though. So teaching students the order, the sequence of the days of the week is mathematical. And then counting like how many days are there in the school days. It says in the lyrics of the song, there are five days. So by doing that, kids get to learn to count instead of formally asking them to count one, two, three, four, it becomes boring to, to them. And it must be the perspective of play and music that they get to learn all of these concepts and, and it's easy for them to retain. That's why observe that mas madali ninyong naalala ang mga lyrics ng song kaysa na favorite ninyo kaysa sa lessons ng mga teachers ninyo. Kasi ganun yun, yun ang madali nga natin maalala ang mga kanta kasi nga we are emotionally and intellectually engaged to it. So ganun din po sana, kung ganun epekto po talaga sa mga individuals, then that's what we want also to be done in our materials preparation and how we are going to deal with our children at home, integrate music, all right? Next would be another uh, benefit of, of using music at home would be mastery of the physical self. Like by moving to with the song, especially if it's a movement song, kids get to uh, develop uh, some of the physical milestones that they're supposed to master at a certain age in toddlerhood and so Example, this song. <laughs> I have a body just like anybody, and I can shake it. So shake it, shake it, yun ayon. Oh, shake, shake. Mayro pang direction, left and right. Oh, on that note, nagkakamali po minsan ang mga gumagawa ng online materials especially at uh, online materials for preschoolers kasi pag gumawa po tayo ng materials dapat mirror image so pag sinabi nating left left right nating gagawin kasi nga sa harap ng bata ang tingin nila niyan sa atin pag nag left tayo right nila yon so perspective at tapo natin ng ay mirror image we have to be conscious about it kasi pag nilumabas ang mga pag lumabas ang audio sabi ng mga bata bakit yung left na sa right but yung right na sa left so nagugulo ng bata so we have to be conscious about it and i know that a lot of Teachers out there already know that, but just, you know, just for us to be conscious about it. And of course, do remind the parents that that's the principle of All right. 
a little more of that. Let's proceed to another one. So I think I don't have enough time anymore. Uh, next would be development of the affected aspect. Okay, through music and movement, children, children, um, children learn acceptable, sorry, acceptable outlets to express feelings and real intentions. And we can also can make specific moves through which children reveal their feelings and emotions. I can example this music book, all right? Let us be happy when the sun shines. The sun lighting up our lives. So Mr. Sun, shine, 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 shine. Keep it shining, shining up our lives. Let us be happy when the wind blows. The wind refreshing up our lives. So Mr. Wind, blow, 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 blow. Keep on blowing and refresh our lives. Let us be happy when the clouds rain. The rain cleansing up our lives. So Mr. Cloud, rain, 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 rain. Keep on raining and refresh our lives. All right, by the song, we get to teach our students, right? Yung boy, uh, kids, when it rains, we should not be sad. Just because it rains doesn't mean we have to be sad in a sad emotion. No, everything that happens in the environment, whether it rains, whether the wind blows, whether it's a sunny day, whether it's a rainy day, whether it's a sunny and a windy day, or it's a rainy, windy day, we still need to be happy because everything that they, everything is a is God's gift. Mga ganun. So, meron tayong tinuturo na emosyon na tama. Kasi may mga, rinig po ako mga kanta. Ang ginagawa po nila na, oh, when it rains, it's, a, it's so sad when it rains. Hindi, wala pong, wala emosyon ng rain. Ang tao nagbibigay ng, kasi kung sad ka, dahil na, na, you're broken, I mean, your heart is broken, you would create rain to crying. Pero sa mga bata, wala pa po silang konsepto ng heart broken. So, bakit dito turo sa kanila na, Oh, hirap naman no. Pag rain, talagang sadya. No, we cannot. So, dapat everything happens because we want our students to have a happy disposition in life. Another one that I have misgivings about the song na Ang magtanim ay di biro Maghapong na kayo ko Sino nga naman maging ma Kung ito yan gagamitin mo sa loob ng klasa Sino nga naman gusto maging, maging farmer Eh, tinuturo mo na sa song Hirap-hirap nga naman ang trabaho na yan Kung ano sabihin mo na Ah, uh, Amen. Ang magtanim ay kay saya, di ba? O di pag ginawa mo ng ganun konsepto na affected motions, di nakukuha ng mga bata ang saya pala magtanim. So, uh, we somehow, whether we like it or not, songs and movement help our stu students learn the emotions, some of the information that we want them to acquire without the teacher lecturing it. Okay? And finally, we have development of creativity. By asking our students to listen to the lyrics of the song, they're able to imagine pictures of shapes around us. See all the things around us, different shapes around us, rectangles, triangles, and squares, as well as circles and ovals to share, rectangles for pizza, circles for balls. So while I say, uh, Triangles for pizzas. They're able now to imagine a pizza or imagine a circle that is a ball, a ball, a circle. So by via the song, we are now helping our students to, to, to improve their imagination. And whether you like it or not, when students imagine, this is now the beginning, if not the, the, the core of listening comprehension. Because understanding concepts is not putting words in our head but actually creating mental images and if we are able and if, our, if we are able to help our students to create mental images be creative of those images inside their head then we are facilitating listening comprehension and it will lead eventually to literacy development later on all right so uh summarize uh summarize my talk now this the in preschool education especially the development of literacy, 
listening plays a great listening and speaking play a really great role in their development. When whether they do art activities, whether they do lis uh, listening to the stories, whether they do uh, games and plays at home, they need to listen to the teacher give instructions. Not just at school, not only not just the learning the learning uh, situation. It's also happening in everyday activity at home. When they wake up in the morning, the mother talks to the child to make bed, to take a bath. All of these are listening activities. Basically, a high percentage of our daily activities rely on listening. So situations would be our students, they are able to hear us, but to be accurately listen to us. Then if you say, ikaw, narinig mo lang ako, pero hindi mo ako pinapakinggan. So that means you... They are just physiologically hearing you, but they are not psychologically listening to you. So, hindi po kasalan ng mga bata. Ibig sabihin po nun, some of the adults surrounding them, kasama na po mga parents, even the teachers, even the brothers and sisters, the older brothers and sisters, the uncles and the aunts, the grandparents, everyone surrounding the child has a has an influence, have an influence, sorry, have an influence to the development of the listening comprehension of students, the absence of which would also mean that the people surrounding them did not help the child develop listening comprehension skills. And I'm telling you, if kids have problems with listening, listening comprehension, then they will have problems with reading and writing later on. With that, I end my session and I'm ready to entertain questions. I apologize again for the interruption of my signal. Yan talaga pag may mga aso, mga puta. Yes, um, Kia, do you have questions though? Hello, Doc. Good afternoon po. Now, how long was I out? Um, again, Doc, ano po yun? How long was I out of <laughs> uh, More or less around, Doc, mga two to three minutes. <laughs> so I was talking continuously and I never realized that I was already out of coverage. Or, is it out of coverage? I was no longer streaming. Anyway, so let's proceed with the question. Okay, na tayo mong right? <laughs> okay po. For a while lang po. Doc, the first question we have is from Miss Lumen Balaw Balawitan Abigar. Sir... Apa. Sir, do you consider that a child needs an expert? or professional needs if he had the hard up focusing in listening? Okay, we're talking about kids at zero to four or five years old and they have problems with listening. Now, well, for early detection, there's a possibility if they are not able to, I think in the listening, you're hearing boy. Kung may hearing problem, but there's a possibility also that would hamper the child's listening comprehension development. Kasi nga kanina, in-explain ko yung kanina na uh, to be able to listen, you must be able to hear uh, hear uh, stimulus from the environment, a lot of stimulus, and be able to focus on it. So kung meron pong problema ang bata may hear, and tawag po natin hearing impairment, it would also precipitate to speaking impairment, to reading impairment, and at late, konektado po yan. So early detection would be nice. So sana kung ganun po, early on, so kahit baby pa po, malalaman po natin kung may problema, kung ang bata hindi nag-respond. Halimbawa, nag-make face, nag-pickaboo ang nanay, nag-ganon, tapos nagtatawa siya o kaya ginawa ng nanay, kinakausap niya pero hindi nag-respond ang bata, nag-ganon-ganon sa tenga pero hindi nag-respond ang bata, o kaya nag-ganon, hindi nag-respond ang bata. I think the child is on. I think you must uh, you must uh, bring your child to a specialist, okay, a hearing specialist, Ian, perhaps, or a child or a pediatrician, a child development pediatrician, or a psychologist to give you refer ref, uh, referrals to appropriate uh, specialists in order to diagnose your child if they have hearing problems. Now, if it comes out that the child has no hearing problem, so we can now say there is a listening problem or giving attention. So, siguro sa bahay, hinahayaan lang ang bata at walang masyadong kumakausap sa kanya. So, ang nangyayari, the child is not taught to listen but just allowed to hear and do whatever he or she likes. So, tama po kayo, ma'am. Pag meron pong mga ganun early childhood po may mga problema at hindi nag-respond ang bata, there's a possibility of hearing impairment, not necessarily listening. So, hearing impairment po. So, specialist na po talaga dapat ang kailangan nating 
lapitan. Not an early child education teacher, although the teach, early child education teacher or preschool teacher or the kindergarten teacher, pwede po sila mag-refer kung may kilala po siya. So that's why I'm asking the private school kung sana may consultant kayo sa schools ninyo na on-call or nag-duty man lang para nagututulungan po ang mga magulang at ang mga teachers kasi hindi lahat po ng teachers have specialization on on child development uh, milestones and knowing what's developmental and what's not. Para po ang teachers po natin nakafocus sa pagtuturo and learning and teaching uh, learning and teaching process. Meron naman po kayong mga espesyalista uh, na nagpo-focus naman sa other needs na maaaring hindi kaya ng teacher i-diagnose. Sa public school, ang tawag po natin dyan ay mga itinerant teachers. I think na nagawa na po ng paraan ng, ng Department of Education na magkaroon ng itinerant teacher, but I think we still lack the budget to fully implement that na every, every school has an itinerant teacher. But I guess we have sped teachers who could also assist us in doing referrals. Thank you very much. Okay po, Doc. Next question we have here from H.S. Lim. Good afternoon, sir. PNU alumna here. I would like to ask, how can we engage our learners to listen to us or our lesson or story if they already know it? There are some learners who are advanced readers. All right, good. Um, I, good. I already had that though. So if I'm able to know, like, sa simula pa lang ng tanong, ng, ng pre-questions ko pa lang, uh, sabi ko, uh, kunwari, nung, nung, nung ako po ay nagtuturo ng preschool noon way back and I was... Ay, huwag na sabihin ko anong year yun at kaya pa malalaman yung age ko. Anyway, nagtuturo, nagturo ako sa preschool and then I was telling a story, the three little pigs, come on, at the time of three little pigs. And my guide question was, um, what do you think will happen to the three brothers, three little pigs who are brothers and they they go on their way and build their own houses? And do you think they need help? Tapos mayroong isang bata na grace na, I already know the story. It's all about the three little pigs and how they were. Okay, okay, okay. I know you know. So I think what's important, and alam mo, alam mo ginawa ko, I modified the story. Instead of focusing the three little pigs, I focus on the the big bad wolf. Na may sakit siya. So actually, that's true. That's about the three little pigs. But it's we're not going to focus on the three little pig, pigs here. We're going to find out the story of the big bad wolf. Why? He went around from house to house and then was puffing and huffing. Actually, it started here. Huh? Huh? Achoo! The big bad wolf had a bad flu. He was coughing and sneezing all the time. He was going around the woods and wanted to and was looking for friends who could help him drink some soup and prepare soup for him. Then he come by a house of straw. Yun. So ginawa ko, I think what's important for the preschool teachers, kasi pag may bata na po na alam na ang kwento, masisira na po talaga ang inyong pagtuturo. So in your head, you must be able to modify uh, your stories. It, it contextualizes. Ito yung tinuturo ko sa, 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 sa early childhood na there's one, isang kwento, dapat maikikwento mo siya in different perspectives. So ang character, like, uh, the story of the three little pigs can be told in the perspective of the wolf, that could be told in the story of the perspective of the eldest pig, could be told in the, in the perspective of the, of the mother pig. So hindi lang dapat matutunan ng mga preschool teachers to be able to adjust and be creative about their stories. Otherwise, sira na po, masisira ng isang bata na alam ng kwento, or... Kung ganun po at hindi, kung hindi naman pa sanay si teacher at hindi duma, hindi po nakapag-aral sa PNU on on preschool kasi may theater arts po kami sa sa PNU noon nung kami ay nas early childhood. At di kayo dumaan noon. So possibly po ang pwede niyo gawin ay okay. So if you know the story, could you tell, let's tell the story together. So kung hindi mo kaya mag hindi ka na sanay na meron kang training on on telling stories in various perspectives tapos kaya mong i-modify agad right there and then kung hindi ka sanay, huwag mong huwag mong huwag kang Sabihin na, ay, kasi hindi naman ako graduate at hindi naman ako na-train ng ganun. Have trainings later on, pero what you can do perhaps is enlist the help of, the, of that student at kayong dalawa magkwento. Or kung gusto mo siya magkwento, tapos tulungan mo na lang siya. Let it be a learning a learning uh, opportunity for that student or for that learner who already uh, who is already familiar with the story, tapos siya na magkwento. Now, ganun pa rin. Ang tawag na natin doon ay retelling. Di ba? Thank you very much for the 
for the question. Very, very nice question, though. Okay po. So, sir, for our third question for today, this is from Miss Mary Ong. Sir, Mary. give me some ideas po. How to encourage a kid if madali lang siya mawala sa focus? Like, nakikinig pa siya ngayon and after 10 minutes, may iba na siyang ginagawa. I think it depends on the age of the students. There's what we call a short attention span. Um, talagang pagbata pa pag 0 to 4 years old, Sir, to four years old, siguro mga two to three minutes ang kanilang attention span. And afterwards, uh, wala na talaga. What I'm trying to say is, look at the age, their age, tapos ano ang kanyang, uh, meron po kasing ano yan, a normal attention span. So pagdating mo sa primary, I think they have now five to ten minutes attention span. So make sure that the activity you want your students to do should be within that uh, attention span. Marami, mo, marami po kasi ginagawa ang mga teachers ng mga activities is beyond the attention span of a particular age group. So, hindi po kasalanan ng mga bata. Yung kasalanan po ng mga teachers and parents na nag-prepare na hindi nila consider yung attention span, normal attention span of kids in that age group. So, you may want to do a research on that. I may be able to integrate that during my ses session next week. But I will, hindi ko kasi hindi ko sa topic yan and it would give me more time again today to talk about it, how to compete for the attention span and so on. So there's a formula for it though. Thank you. So siguro doon lang po natin na angkop lang po. Kung ang mga anak niyo ay nasa primary, I think five to ten minutes activity is enough. Kaya pag naggawa kayo ng activity sa, sa mga modules niyo, dapat five to ten minutes or even less than that. So basta between five to ten minutes. Pagdating sa bahay, ganun din din po sana ang ating gagawin. Na again, our parents are not are not necessarily be educators unless they're educators but if parents are not did not they are not educators they do not know the role of attention span of kids in in giving instructions halimbawa ang bata ninyo ay nasa high school na o nasa grade 4 grade 5 grade 6 mga isang minuto lang aba may problema po ang inyong anak ninyo na hindi maka-focus there's a possibility of attention deficit disorder Hindi na, not sa ADHD perhaps, may lang attention deficit lang po siya. Attention deficit caused by research by Stanford University. Uh, one primary uh, primary factor in the diminishing of individual or students' attention span is too much use of gadgets and too much television. Why, if you look at the television program, mayroon mayro lang siyang uh, time for commercials and time for the program. So, nagkakaroon po ng constant na hanggang dito lang talaga ang attention span ng bata, hindi siya lamalaki. Unlike if you are asking to watch television movies, mas nakakatulong pa sa bata ang pag-develop ng kanyang attention span sa movies kaysa sa too much television. Kasi television fix po na 5 minutes, 3 minutes, 1 minute. So, ang utak ng bata, ang kanyang attention span na pre-pre-wire ng time allotment sa television. And it's not good for early for, for young children and not good for, especially for the elementary grades. Kaya nga, ako po, ako po susunod po, mas maganda po ang mga movies, ang mga films, kaysa sa television. So I would go for, say, um, Cartoon Network. Sorry, siguro pang kailangan ka susunod. Kung walang Cartoon Network, basta movies po. Mayroong natatapusin ang programa bago mag-shift mag ang utak to other things. All right? Uh, that's a good, that was a, uh, a study. It was presented here in the Philippines. Uh, and I was one of the presenters of, of, of another research uh, in Bacolod way back in 1999, sorry, 2016. And it was presented by a developmental psychologist. Really interesting. The effect of television, television and too much use of gadgets to the attention span of learners. Okay, thank you very much. Okay po, Doc. Uh, thank you very much for that. This is our last question na po, Doc. I oh, think this is related. <laughs> I think po, this is related to the previous one. This is from Ms. Teresa Crichel Alabanza. For, mm -hmm. for one-year-old kid, is it advisable to let the kid watch educational shows? If yes, what is the allotted time for it? If no, what are the other activities you can recommend? Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not just one year old. It could be younger. It could even just, you know, even, you know, a newborn baby listen to the educational songs, educational videos. There's no such thing as uh, um, sobrang aga ng pag-education. For kids listening to music, 
they are learning but having fun at the same time. Din sabi ko na integrating music in our lesson makes learning fun and not boring and listening is developed since as early as as you know as six months even two months newly born palis parinig mo sa mga lots of research show that uh, early early exposure to music kids uh, babies early exposure to music and to movement hastens their mental capacities and their cognitive fa- cognitive functions so it's more positive now if you're asking me for 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 suggestions on what I would go for classical music as uh, if they're still babies. Classical music like Beethoven, you have uh, Chopin. So these are good music for them too. Instrumental songs, and then probably when they can now, you know, like about uh, under say eight months or one year old, you can ask them to listen to uh, educational songs and watch. Uh, I don't want to kasi baka pag hindi ako sinyo ng mga application details that I'm not promoting them. So basta marami pong nakalagay doon sa mga application for kids na online. I don't know with Vival if they have materials for that, but hopefully they can develop materials for one-year-old, two-year-old toddler, infants, toddlers, and preschoolers para ma-develop po yung mga... So, para, again, masasabi ko lang po talaga is the earlier, the better. That's it. Kia? Kia, are you there? I don't want to promote my own songs though, but I already have, uh, you know, children's songs, educational songs out there. So you may want to use that too. Pero ako kasi mas maganda kasi talaga ano muna, mga instrumental music muna kasi tempo muna ang kukuha ng mga bata dyan. And then eventually you move on to uh, uh, educational uh, educational uh, short films like yung mga letters, uh, the train, uh, the uh, yung blue, yung, yung train na blue siya. Uh, ayo po wag mo nang mga Sesame Street and so on and so forth when i was growing up i could still remember very very young that i was watching batibot i don't know if you panabutan niyo yon but um batibot played a great role in my developing and my listening skills and my literacy skills and i was so up to it and then later eventually it became uh, sesame street and eventually became uh, what was the next after sesame street uh, Hari Mari Hari Maniwara Maniwari sa sa ano po din niyan sa television. I forgot what channel was it, but Rayo Maniwari was really good. And before that, we also have the I was watching the the magic uh yung ano ba yung yung Bible shows noon na na lumabas pa pasok sa libro tas they they travel back in time during the time of Jesus Christ something like that. Uh it was It was memorable to me and, and, and my listening skills were highly developed because of that. I'm just saying based on my experience and the things that I've, I've, I've experienced as a child is what exactly what I'm doing for the, my nieces and nephews and that's what I'm suggesting to my brothers and sisters so that it maximizes the, the learning, of, learning and development of my nephews and nieces. And I, I think some of the teachers of my nephews and nieces could, could say that I'm bilis matuto ng mga pamangking ko. Not because of genetics, but because of more of the support of the parents to their development. So, Kia, that's about it. Thank you very much for the questions. Okay. And, thank, yeah. sige po, Doc. Thank you very much po for answering the queries from our viewers this afternoon. Doc, before we end the session, do you have any final reminders for our viewers? Of course, I always have final reminders. <laughs> so, in, so, here it is now, my conclusions and implications so implications for developing listening comprehension for literacy development these are just you know things that you need to be reminded of one select and design tasks and materials so these are the things that you need to consider it must be authentic authentic meaning they already exist you don't have to create kasi ang hirap magdadaw ka pa ng materials so, halimbawa kung mag-integrate ka ng music edi kumu maghanap ka na lang music kaysa ka maggawa ka pa ng sarili mo unless from you know myself and you have a brother or sister who can compose and help you compose your own songs or create your own stories. In my case, kasi mas gusto ko si original. Kasi nga, as, as, as a preschool specialist and a consultant, it's very nice that I, I use my own materials and original things. But if for teachers out there, for parents out there, there are already existing things, uh, uh, materials out there. So authentic meaning, nagawa siya, na, na-encounter ng bata. Kaya nga, pwede yung gamitin ang, ang kanta ng SM, kanta ng Goldilocks, ang... ang Jingle ng, jingle ng Jollibee, jingle ng McDonald's, kuhang-kuhan ng bata yun agad, promise. 
next to be relevant relevant in relevant to the lesson okay alam mo gamitin mo Jollibee pero ang lesson mo pala ay K ano sabi ng bata ah that's Kali B oh di ba kung Jollibee this kung J na pong lesson niyo letter J and that's another J then you can integrate the music Jollibee All right next would be interesting um because it's authentic and it's relevant i think it's interesting i think i've already made some uh, suggestions what makes it interesting to kids one it's upbeat and it, it relates to their emotions and then they're able to move with it all right next is provide a purpose for listening guide questions are very important the prompts are very important i've given you some examples how for list how how you can help students focus on listening it can be through pictures it could be through um a song it could be through uh story boards and so on and so forth so make sure that you have prompts so that students would would see the need to listen next would be provide, provide feedback i think this is one of the many challenges for for teachers and parents right now the new normal how do we create materials right of listening integrating listening in our mo- online materials and module and providing feedback um yan isang malaking challenge po yan kasi siguro maganda rin magkaroon po ng ng schedule for online na magkausap-usap po ang magulang at ang mga teacher ang mga teacher ang grupo ng mga ang a uh, grupo ng mga estudyante with uh, teachers pero it's a challenge for for teachers are assigned to students who uh, the students are you know living in mountains and places where technology is still a problem so but nonetheless you know we have to traverse over pro, uh, providing feedback to our learners next we have a spoken language different from written language yesterday i gave you some some examples that when speaking on when speaking and and developing listening comprehension enunciation the pace of how we speak should be within the pace of comprehensibility level of our students so hindi ang kagaya ng written language na pwedeng ilagay doon ang mga inexplain mo in spoken language remember yesterday i've explained that try to deliver it as if you're just conversing to the child and not like sounding that you are like a book ano nakasulat sa libro para binabasa na ng bata next you have teach listening strategies embed the listening strategies the strategies that i've given you like questions and matching and coloring and drawing giving instructions and all to help students focus on listening because whether we like it or not with the new normal kids will be now be required to do a lot of listening tasks and finally one of the implications and things that we need to be reminded of when developing listening compression for literacy development would be relate listening tasks to modules importante po yon dapat ang ginawa mong listening task helps them focus on the modules that they're going to read or to the online modules that they're going to read if you consider most of these factors in the development of materials in delivering the materials and helping and listening to help and uh, assistance of the parents at home then i think we have have uh, considered 30% of the things that we need to prepare our students to uh, embark on the new situation of the learn teaching and learning process in the new normal with that thank you very much and this is my last webinar for this week and i hope to see you next week for my uh, topics that i will be delivering thank you very much ribal thanks again for trusting me and i have blessed uh, even if i got cut off with my signal but i came back with a blast thank you and good afternoon There we have it. Thank you very much, Brother Roderick Aguirre, for this another engaging and insightful session that you had with us. It is our pleasure to have you every day, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Then we'll see you again next week, Dr. Aguirre, for another learning session with our viewers this afternoon. Thank you. And of course, all our Kabibal viewers, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in and being with us. This Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday afternoon of yours. We'll hope to see you again tomorrow for another learning session. Once again, thank you very much, and God bless us all. Thank you.